the second vertical slice for Space Engineers 2 finally arrived in all its glory with planets, gravity and the fully functional building system in survival mode. This means we are finally able to lay our hands on it and experience what it will be like to build things in survival. That said, it's time to evaluate this system compared to what we used to in Space Engineers 1. And believe me, there is something to learn for everyone. Those who have never heard of Space Engineers, those who have spent thousands of hours on the first version, and both owners of the second one and those who are still thinking. Because today we are going to evaluate each stage of the building process, highlighting enhancements and caveats. For caveats, I'm going to split them into design decisions and temporary issues, to give you a full picture of both long-term changes and current state fitting. Without further ado, let's get into it! In AC1 we all used to place blocks as scaffolds. That carried some benefits, like the ability to work on those blocks right away. But some cons also, like the requirement to have one component to place the block or the inability to go through blocks to weld what underneath. In AC2 you're not placing the blocks at all, you're manipulating projections. So no more, ah shit, I need a steel plate for it. And most importantly, the skill to see the final shape of the build through scaffoldings become obsolete. That matched the main goal King set for Space Engineers 2, to become a truly user-friendly game that is easy to learn and get into. Great job here! The other amazing change is well known for anyone following the development process. The unified grid gives us a new level of flexibility for detailing. No more issues with just a control panel occupying the whole 2.5 meter block. We can finally build highly detailed structures or place any blocks on ships or rovers all above without messing with subgrids. Projection-based design also means that we can use all creative tools in survival. Forget about grinding down each misplaced block, remove them with just right click. Place lines or planes in one click. Use symmetry mode in survival. If all that doesn't sound like a miracle to you, I don't know what does. Because in my opinion, this will allow us to build anything times faster and a lot less stressful. But there is more. One of the not so obvious advantages will make the start of the game 100 times easier both for newcomers and long-term fans. Because now you don't need anything like a projector or even a base to bring in any ship you like, literally in the first minute and weld it up with your hand welder. For newcomers it provides even more, the ability to just subscribe to any ship in the workshop and get it in-game without poking around trying to learn all the blocks at once. But the most lovely part of this experience is that they'll still learn while welding this ship up. Because it happens block by block, unlike in other similar games that just spawn ready to use ships. I can't imagine a better way to implement that. Speaking of small but incredibly handy tools, this system is packed with undo and redo features. Placed or removed a block of the whole ship by mistake? Not a big deal, just press Ctrl Z and it's back, like nothing happened. Wanna return something just being undone? Press Ctrl Y to redo it back on. It's so natural for anyone that it feels like it's been here forever and takes no time to get used to. And finally, there is a partial copy feature. We can forget about the painful, endless recreation complex parts of our builds. With this feature it's easy to simply copy any part of existing build and paste it anywhere. I can't express enough how time-saving and amazing this feature is. 
all the changes we discussed so far are so exciting that it's easy to miss a few caveats, but they are here. So let's look under the cover. As for design cons, I can see only two things. Inability to work on projections, which will make no jetpack playthroughs a bit rough, because we used to build our way up with scaffoldings, gradually walking further. You absolutely can weld in just one component to convert projection to scaffolding, but it will return requirement to carry initial components, grinding them down if needed, and so on. Not the deal breaker, but something to be aware of. Regarding ways to specific issues, there are quite a few. First one is projections, by the look of it, are technically a separate grids. So there are some issues placing blocks in the corner of already welded and projected grids. You can work that around welding nearby projected blocks and it will solve the issue. The symmetry mode is a bit bugged out. When you place a block at the center of symmetry, it can place two, one you can weld, but the other will remain there and you can neither weld it nor even remove it. To be completely fair, this issue can be reproduced even without symmetry mode, but it's really rare corner case here. As soon as we done with the design, it's time to bring some metal into it. So let's look into welding. There we have more cons than benefits, at least for now. As for benefits, there will be, at least I believe so, a way to weld components that are covered by others. I say it will, because for now it doesn't work, but for me it seems like a bug, not a design choice. As for design cons, there are plenty, unfortunately. The fact that you need to put components in the blocks in order is really annoying. We all used to toss components in blocks in any order, which was really beneficial when you're trying to build a series of blocks and suddenly running out of a particular component. The fact that there is no build planner commits even more frustration at this point. You can't get as many components as you need for blocks in a simple way without doing some math to calculate exact amounts and then going through painful process of withdrawing them from containers. I really hope that this will be reconsidered by Kin down the road. Welding small blocks up is a pain. Since we got new, even tinier size blocks, such an issue we actually had in Space Engineers 1 got just colors here. We really need a mechanic like an area welding, or at least a working grid welders. Building from raw resources is quite a debatable one. I'm personally on the same page with Splitsy about that. The idea is good, but the balance and the feeling it provides are just all the way wrong, making the smelter technically useless. Link to the Splitsis video in the description below, and I'd love to read your thoughts on that in the comments. As for these two issues, though, you can walk through the projection, but you can't weld underneath blocks. While the selection indicator highlights by making it blink the correct block, the welder tries to weld the block directly in front of you, which interferes with your character. A bit disappointing one, but you can also work that around. Just remove blocks that are in your way, weld pots underneath, and then use undo feature to return removed blocks. A few more actions, of course, but it's still less of a pain than we had in Space Engineers 1. Also, there are a lot of issues with the welder's aim in general, especially for small blocks. You often have to find the one bloody pixel to weld up a block. Really annoying one, but clearly an issue that can be fixed soon. As a workaround, try to find the flat side of the block and weld it from there. It's typically easier to find the right pixel on the flat side than on the rounded one. Grid welders are non-functional right now. That makes building huge or highly detailed projects a bit of a pain in the backside, 
especially considering that backpack capacity is not enough even to carry set of plates for two large armor blocks. In general, though, welding become a bit more pleasant in my opinion. Not too flashy, not too loud, especially compared with SE1. But even the most thoughtful design requires some changes after testing. So the last part we are going to explore today is grinding. The grinding in EC2 is not that different from Space Engineers 1, but a few minor changes and issues are here. As for benefits, I am really struggling to find one that will positively distinguish it from AC1. New spark effect and more pleasant sound, maybe? For cons though, there are some. Design-wise, there is another issue related to ordered placement of components in blocks. Since components should be placed in a strict order, they should be removed also in order. Which means that if you missed working in space, you'll see a lot of components flying all around because you grinded the block further and they were released. Typically, it ends up with you flying around the whole star system, collecting them back, because while you reach your storage and empty your inventory, those components are managing to fly farther than you can imagine. As for temporary waste 2 issues, there is already familiar by welder aiming issue. Sometimes grinder just can't focus on block just in front of you. Another no less annoying one is that the grinder requires roughly the same time to grind down huge blocks and the tiny ones. I'd prefer to see it dependent on the number of components in the block, not constant. Because grinding down a huge array of small or even decorative blocks become a real nightmare. I think the reason for such behavior may be that Keen tried to protect us from accidentally grinding down blocks we don't want, but it definitely doesn't work as intended, making the process more annoying than beneficial. Regardless of all complaints pointed out before, I believe that even currently the building experience in Space Engineers 2 is much more pleasant than in the first version, and considering most of the issues are clearly bugs and will be solved soon, after a slight polish it will become even better. And even despite a few design flaws I found during my exploration, I really love the new way. So if you like this video and want to learn more about Space Engineers to change with me, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.